Hey there, welcome to another DFS Build NFL Edition Week 1 Main Slate at DraftKings. This is going to be a fun one, and how could it not be? It's the return of an actual full real-life regular season NFL slate. I am excited. Ended up breaking even on the Thursday Night Football kickoff game, but I did give out some pretty awesome advice. I loved Isaiah Likely as the top captain. Had him a lot. I also had a lot of Xavier Worthy. Liked him, too. Unfortunately, I had a crap ton of... Travis Kelsey and of course Mark Andrews. Where I where I didn't have Isaiah Likely, I had a lot of Mark Andrews, and those guys were good plays. It just that's the way it worked. Um, so yeah, but hopefully you had the right combo. Hopefully you had Xavier and uh, you know Likely together, and obviously Mahomes and Lamar were were good. Well, Mahomes was okay. Lamar was a was a beast, uh, but hopefully you had the right combo and you did well. Um, if not, it's on to Friday night, which by the way, at the end of this video, you can catch my analysis and top picks for that as well. Also, we got an MLB DFS video out for the day. So we are just crushing it all along here and hopefully we're helping you win and help, helping you through your process. If that is the case, give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel so you get alerted to future videos just like this. All right, let's not waste any more time because we got a lot of games to go through, and I actually want to go game by game. So we look at the situation, the game total, the plays, and all that, and hopefully that will give us a pretty clear understanding of what we want to do. So right away, Steelers at Falcons, Arthur Smith revenge game. Going back to Atlanta, he got fired last year. Obviously, he got the heat from fantasy players all over uh, every single week just because of his – weird utilization of his players. So finally, the free Kyle Pitts and free Drake London crew is out and about, and Kirk Cousins arrives, and obviously the Falcons have a lot of upside. I don't know if I really like it for week one, though, at least not the quarterback position. Obviously, Kirk Cousins is 36 years old. He's coming off a torn Achilles, and he's not very mobile to begin with. So he absolutely has the weapons to get there, and he's only 6.1K on DK. So I don't mind it, and his projection at 17 is fine. So he's playable. He just isn't on my radar because there's cheaper guys. You know, there's guys in his price range that have a better ceiling, and there's obviously uh, guys we can spend up for that you just feel a lot better about. So Cousins is fine if you want to use him. I just won't be going uh, his direction you know, this week, I think it's important to kind of cut down your player pool a little bit. I think, I don't know if I would completely eliminate somebody like Kirk cousins from my player pool, but there are guys that you should consider doing that too. So you are kind of, um, you know, not spreading yourself too thin. Cause the more you do that, the less likely it is that you're going to hit that perfect lineup. If you're entering a lot of lineups, I'm a single entry player. So I'm just going to pick, I'm just going to pick the best guys and, and uh, mix them in with like one of the better situations, you know, or the better game environments of the slate and go that way. And this is not it. This game has what a 44 total. So it's not uh no, it's 42 total. So it's not super uh, inviting. Um, and I, I, if I would get exposure to it, it would not be at the quarterback position. The other option would be Russell Wilson, who is uh, nicked up. Let's check his status just for a quick uh, refresher. He is questionable with a calf issue. He hopes to play. So if Wilson plays, I have no interest at 5.5K. He actually wasn't that bad down the stretch with Denver. Um, and the Falcons are, in theory, a good matchup. They were actually uh, a bottom five defense against fantasy quarterbacks last year. Um, and with Arthur Smith out of town, who really knows how they're gonna how they're gonna look now? Just because the offense is gonna change, right? If the Falcons are gonna be more pass happy, maybe that makes the Steelers, you know, keep up and all that. So, all that aside, I don't have any actual interest in Russell Wilson. Um, I would have interest in Justin Fields though. If Wilson can't play and Justin Fields is there at five K flat, he might end up being mega chalk. Justin Fields coming in on turf against a not great defense. Uh, in a in a game that could end up being a shootout, honestly, it could it could uh, overcome this low total. Um, he would be interesting. Justin Fields, I absolutely would consider. All right, moving on here to running back in this game. Bijan Robinson looks awesome at seven point seven k. He might be a little vengeful against Arthur Smith, just because Arthur Smith kind of limited him a little bit as a rookie. Um, you know, Steelers are not uh, an easy defense to play, but they can be had on the ground. They're kind of middle of the pack last year. Uh, against the run. Um, so, I mean, Bajan also just has a monster role. He's going to be the first guy they look to in the red zone. He's going to get catches. He's going to get a lot of carries. So, I mean, there's not, there's not a lot of running backs to feel amazing about on this slate, but I will say Bijan is one of them. I don't want to pay all the way up 
to almost 8K for a running back on a slate where we have a lot of good wide receivers. Um, but I think uh, getting a really reliable running back or two in, in DFS for week one is kind of a good idea. So I like him quite a bit, and uh, he's pushing almost 20 fantasy points for his projection. Um, 16% ownership. I don't know if, if that's going to be you know too high or, or not. I also don't know if I really care. So he's definitely in my player pool for running back like Bijan quite a bit. Uh, only other running back in this game I would consider is Najee Harris. Uh, Jalen Warren is still a little banged up. I think he's going to play. Let me just double check. Always like to double check even as we're going through the show here just because, I mean, I don't want to be wrong and give you bad information. So he's got his hamstring issue. He's listed a full participant, so he is back. Obviously, that could always flare up again. So at 5.3K, not super excited to uh, take a gamble on J- Jalen Warren. Uh, the Falcons did grade out pretty good against the run last year, but I think Najee Harris, just given Arthur Smith's tendencies as a play caller and uh, his role and his ability to score touchdowns and everything, also he was good down the stretch last year. I think Najee is a fine value at 5.3K. And if you're not worried about Jalen Warren and you think – you know, if you know, you think he's going to have a really big role right away, that's fine too. Um, not really eager to play Steelers at all, let alone their running backs here, but they are good values um, if we can bank on them having pretty good roles. All right, moving on, wide receiver in this game. Drake London is easily my top pick. He's going to have a massive role. Um, he's basically Kirk Cousins' new Justin Jefferson. Obviously, he's not as good as Jefferson, not as explosive as Jefferson, but he's going to get a lot of targets, and he is going to be a factor in the red zone. That is the thing I thought he was going to be you know, most impactful with coming out of USC. I thought he was going to be a big touchdown guy. I liken him a lot to Mike Evans. So that just hasn't really happened, but it still could. And I think with Cousins there, there's a very good chance it does. So Drake London is too cheap at 6K. Um, George Pickens at 5.7K is fine. Um, I don't think he's a priority pick at all, but he's the top weapon for the Steelers passing game. Um, So yeah, I don't don't have a problem with the 5.7. It's a good price for a guy who's going to be the number one wide receiver for his team. No issue there. It just doesn't grade out as the most amazing matchup. Um, and I definitely prefer in this game and just in this price range, I would definitely prefer Drake over Pickens, and I don't really care about the ownership. One other guy we'll note here, Darnell Mooney. He is an explosive guy who can run really nice routes, and he has been held back in the past by quarterback play. That's not going to be the case any, anymore with Kirk Cousins there. So he is a very interesting punt at 4.2K, and he's not going to be owned. So I will mention that. Not really seeing anybody else that I love. Um, Obviously, let's see, Roman Wilson, limited participant with an ankle injury. I don't know. I don't want to go look for uh, Steelers and Sillery pieces that much. Uh, but yeah, love London. Pickens is fine. Mooney is a very nice uh, value play, a nice punt at wide receiver. Moving on to tight end. I think the tight end situation for the Steelers is going to be a bit of a mess. I really just don't trust Arthur Smith to begin with. Uh, but Pat Fearmuth, um does not project very well. He is cheap at 4.4 K, but is he going to be splitting time with Darnell Washington and, you know, Connor Hayward to a lesser extent? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the projection. Um, You know, the Falcons are not great against tight ends. So there's that, but I think there's other better ways to go. One of them is in this game. And that is Kyle Pitts. He's had a hamstring issue pop up, but he practiced fully on Thursday. So it looks like he's ready to go. Obviously, he's very explosive. He's got a lot to prove. He's facing the guy who held him back. Um, and he's really cheap, 4.6K. 4, 4. So we know Kirk Cousins can do stuff for his wide receivers with Jettas, and we know he can do stuff with tight ends with TJ Hawkinson. So love Kyle Pitts. 4.6K is way too cheap. Obviously, Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews slash Isaiah likely aren't on this slate at tight end. So tight end is not as good um, as it would be. So Pitts looks really, really good at 4.6K. Looking over at the defenses, I think the Falcons look like a pretty decent defense against the Steelers just because I don't really trust Russell Wilson. Uh, The Steelers are a value at 2.9K just because, you know, TJ Watt leads a pretty good, uh, solid uh, defense there. Um, So I'm kind of indifferent. Uh, I guess Steelers would make more sense as far as saving some cash. I just like to punt defense in general, Uh, but both are actually viable on this slate. Kick back over to quarterback and let's go to the next game, Carolina, New Orleans. And by the way, uh, just for next week, 
maybe if you if you have a strong lean on this, give a comment and be like, hey, you know what, this format sucks, or hey, you know what, this format's awesome. Always do it this way, and then we'll you know I'll think about it and we'll see if Taylor ends up coming in for these shows again, um, and then we'll take it from there. These might take a little bit longer, but I feel like they're a little bit more in depth and kind of go over all the options so you have a, a better understanding of what you want to do. All right, next game, Panthers and Saints. This has a low total. Bryce Young. I mean, I don't want anything to do with these guys. Bryce Young and Derek Carr. I mean, I don't think oh, – jeez. You know, Bryce Young should be better uh, with the coaching upgrade in Carolina. Um, and both these guys are cheap, but I'm just not – I'm just not feeling it. I, I don't think uh, – I don't think either of these guys are safe and I don't think either of these guys have, you know, much of a ceiling. I mean, if you look at quarterback last year, um, the Panthers were fourth in fancy points allowed per game against quarterbacks. Not great. Saints were top 10. So it's not really the best matchup. Um, and these guys weren't, these guys aren't like uh super helpful with their legs and they're not, they just don't have like super high floors and they certainly don't possess really nice ceiling. So not interested in the quarterbacks whatsoever. When we talk about cutting down our player pool, I'm not going to lose sleep by cutting Bryce young and Derek Carr out of my player pool. If they go nuts and I lose because Bryce young has five touchdowns or something, I'm willing to live with that. All right. On we go to running back Elvin Kamara, uh, 6.7 K a little bit pricey for who he was down the stretch last year. But Kendra Miller is on the pup list to start the year. And all that's threatening him is Jamal Williams. And of course, Taysom Hill to some degree. Um, it's a good matchup. He projects well. He's coming in with pretty high ownership, almost 23%. I don't mind fading Elvin Kamara at that price and ownership just because he has not been an efficient rusher. And the only way he's going to get there, in my opinion, is if Taysom Hill doesn't vulture his touchdowns and he gets a lot of catches. So, um, both of those are certainly still possible. Um, but I just don't necessarily trust him. Uh, and the Panthers, by the way, <clears throat> by the way, were a top 10 defense as far as not allowing a lot of catches to the running back position. So perhaps they will play him a little bit better than they have in the past. Um, that said the projection and the ownership indicates Kamara is a fine play. You can play him if you want to. I am just going to be, I'm going to choose to right away be under, weight on Elvin Kamara. I mean, like, I don't want to play him anyways already. And the fact that he's actually going to be owned uh, at that high of a level makes me super excited to just fade the shit out of him. All right. So uh, then we got Hubbard. He is somebody I would want to consider actually uh, only 5.3 K. There's no Jonathan Brooks to start the year. It'll be interesting to see how much Miles Sanders factors back into this offensive backfield, but I kind of just trust that Hubbard's going to be the guy. Don't love his 16% ownership. But I think he's got a decent projection. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a cheap, nice price for a guy who probably will have a pretty good role to start the year. Matchup, not the best. Saints historically have a pretty good run defense. Um, but, you know, you, that's just something that I'm going to ignore that a little bit and kind of lean more on the overall role. All right, wide receiver we go. Um uh, and by the way, not to say Hubbard's like a priority for me by any means, especially if he's carrying ownership, which he is right now. But I think he's a fine play at that price. A wide receiver, Chris Olave, Deontay Johnson are obviously the two guys that stand out the most. Olave is 6.6K. Let's go look at the matchup here. Uh, Panthers defensively were number two against wide receivers last year. So that's never something you want to see. Obviously, Olave is good enough to be kind of matchup proof here. Um, I just don't really trust Carr, and I, I so I think the ceiling is kind of limited. Uh, Olave's fine, but I'm not going to make him a priority. Not really going to make uh, Deontay Johnson a priority either, just because we don't know who Marshawn Lattimore is going to be facing. Um, provided Marshawn Lattimore is playing, he's like always hurt. Let me just check if he's actually healthy at the moment. Uh, let's see. Let's see, limited in practice. So as long as Lattimore is playing, then I can kind of rest on the laurels, so to speak, and not be as excited about Deontay Johnson. But at 5.3K, he is a fine try just because supposedly he is the Carolina Panthers' number one receiver. Um, if he does draw the coverage, then I guess Adam Thielen would be freed up and he'd be interesting at 5.2K. And I'll mention Rashid uh, Shahid, Shahid just because he's an explosive player and he's only 4.4K. He's going to be the number two guy for the Saints to start with the year. So if the Panthers are locking up Olave, Shahid could definitely get loose down the field and end up smashing here. Um, 
he's like Mooney. He's another really interesting value play at wide receiver. Although there's better ones and we'll get to them at tight end. Uh, not really trusting the Panthers tight ends yet. They have a rookie in John Tavian Sanders who is an athletic beast. And he's only 2.5 K, but we really don't know what his role is going to be right off the bat. So if we can trust that he's actually going to be out there and catch a lot of passes, then sure. 2.5 K that's amazing. Um, but I don't know in big money contests that I want to trust Jatavian Sanders right away. I'd, I'd maybe wait a week or two and see how that plays out. Taysom Hill at his price point, 4.3K is a little bit interesting. He's not going to garner ownership because nobody ever knows what to make out of him. I mean, how can you? You just don't know how they're going to use him and when. Um, but he's going to get some goal line touches. He's going to get the ball uh, just randomly and when car t- gets taken off the field. And he's also going to be active as... I, I've, I've read that he's going to be active as a true running back, a fullback, and a tight end. So if he's just going to be out there as an offensive weapon at the tight end position, which is not as stacked as it would be um, for this week, Hill at 4.3K is very interesting. So I absolutely uh, have interest in Hill. Uh, I do prefer Kyle Pitts uh, in that price range, but Hill is uh, in play. Uh, for defenses, I mean, the Saints defense is a little bit expensive, but obviously facing Bryce Hung, Bryce Young um, is why. So if you think Bryce Young is just uh, just awful and he's going to continue you know, a downward trend, then you can absolutely fire up the Saints defense. I don't like paying for my defenses. Um, he, I swear every single time I do, they just bottom out. And it, just, it just does not go well. So. I'm not saying they're going to fail uh, and they're not even carrying ownership right now, but I don't really want to pay 3.7 K for what I think is a bad saints team. Anyways. Um, On the other side, I really like the Panthers. Actually. I think the saints offense has kind of a low ceiling. um, And Derek Carr is just a guy who's kind of prone to turnovers and getting, getting sacked. So the Panthers are as a 2.4 K punt. That's one of my favorite defenses on the board. All right, go back to quarterback, and here we go. Arizona Buffalo. This could be a shootout. Has a forty-seven and a half point total. Um, the Bills are seven-point favorites. Josh Allen obviously looks amazing. The Cardinals have a defensive guru, so to speak, as their head coach, but their defense has not been good. Uh, they were a bottom five defense against fantasy quarterbacks last year, and that is expected to continue. So Josh Allen, the eight K flat, is looking, you know, like he's you know worth the price. I guess the issue would be, well, he's expensive, but also there's blow at risk and there's even the, you know, lingering um, concern that you know, losing Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis is just going to completely bankrupt this offense. I don't believe it will. Maybe we'll find out right away in week one that I'm very wrong. I don't know, but Josh Allen looks like a great play. He's got the best fancy point projection at the quarterback position for the week. I'm pretty sure. Um, and he's not garnering ownership because of his price. So I love Josh Allen for this week. Um, I think this is going to be a shootout. Um, and I think the Cardinals can keep it close enough to, you know, make it worth paying for him. But I mean, just the rushing floor is there. I think he's got enough weapons to get it done too. So the only issue with that is there are guys on this slate that can match Josh Allen. Possibly if he doesn't have like an epic ceiling game, there are a few guys. Cause like, for instance, in this same game, Kyler Murray is considerably cheaper. He also offers that dual threat upside and he's only behind him by like four fantasy points. He also isn't garnering that much ownership on the slate right now. So if that sticks, Kyler Murray in a vacuum is the better play here, but it depends on what you want to do with your roster. If you want to go get some stud wide receivers, I don't think, I don't think you're going to be able to get Josh Allen. Uh, if you think there's a lot of mid range wide receivers or even punts that you feel really good about, then, you know, Josh Allen feels like a really, really safe pick. But between the two right now, Kyler Murray is obviously the better play on to running back. We have James cook for the bills. You know, they drafted Ray Davis. I think he's going to steal some carries, maybe even uh, start, you know, jumping in getting some um, goal line touches and taking away from James cook. But honestly, who's the guy who's going to get those most of the time anyways, it's Josh Allen. Right? So I'm not interested in Ray Davis. Uh, but I do think Allen and Davis combined to lower James Cook's ceiling enough for me to be completely off of him here. He's pushing 7K and all those things considered. I just, uh, it just doesn't feel safe enough for me to invest those funds into him. I think he's a talented, explosive back and he could smash. Uh, that could happen anytime with him, but I don't want to take that risk. Uh, James Conner feels like a better, safer play. He's $700 cheaper. He doesn't project as well, but he also isn't going to carry any ownership. So 
in a game that could be a shootout where he could get a bunch of catches and some goal line opportunities. I think James Conner looks pretty good. He's not a major priority for me uh, just because he's a 30 year old running back and he does have Trey Benson behind him. Um, but at 6.2 K, I think you could do a lot worse at running back. That wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. is a little bit expensive. Uh, I think if you're going to pay over 7K, you want somebody who's you, you know who's proven, who you've actually seen do it. So if I'm going to go up there and pay seven flat or you know 7.2K, I think I'd rather just keep going and go get you know uh, Tyree Kill or Justin Jefferson or just somebody else who I feel a little bit more confident about. That said, he does project pretty well. Uh, he is the top option for them. And it's supposed it's supposed to be a shootout. So Harrison in a vacuum is a good play. I just don't love the price. Khalil Shakir, uh, Curtis Samuel, Keon Coleman, they're kind of all, all rolling in together for me. I guess Khalil, due to his explosive ability and familiarity with the offense, he's the best play. But I think all those guys are kind of similar, and they're all pretty risky. Uh, also for Arizona, you could look at Greg Dortch or Michael Wilson. Um, I guess I would... I would lean towards Greg Dorch because he's cheaper and projects better, but I don't think either of those guys are super safe. Tight end, uh, I've been talking about him all offseason. Love Dalton Kincaid. He's the better value when compared to Trey McBride. He has almost the same exact um, fantasy projection. He is like double the own ownership, though. So, uh, you know, when I'm looking at that, I think Trey McBride is probably going to be the easy call because he does project a little bit better. He's not that much more expensive and he's not nearly his own, but both these guys look awesome. Uh, there's a little bit of risk with Kincaid just because, I mean, I think he's going to have a huge role, but we don't know for sure yet. We don't know how it's going to play out. Um, so right now, I would probably go McBride over Kincaid, but I like them both quite a bit. Defensively, I mean, I'm, if you think the Cardinals are just going to be a dumpster fire, the Bills at 3K looks like a pretty good value. But other than that, I don't really want to target a defense in a game that is uh, projected to have a ton of points. I will say Cardinals at 2.4 K isn't the worst thing because the bills are projected to do well here. So there's, there could, sh- should be some chalky ownership there. Um, but also because Josh Allen does turn the ball over. So if Josh Allen does turn the ball over and or struggle in this game, the Cardinals would be, you know, pretty appealing. They're carrying a little bit of ownership though. And I don't really anticipate them having a good game here though. So I don't want to do that. All right, next up here, we have Titans and the Bears. Caleb Williams at 5.9K looks awesome. Uh, The Titans were just, let's see, kind of middle of the pack against quarterbacks last year. I don't think they're going to have much of an answer for Caleb Williams. I saw enough in the preseason and, you know, at USC, I think he's a stud. Uh, He has a really good weapons around him in Chicago, and he's not expensive enough right away. Really good projection, too. So the only... Only problem with Caleb Williams for me is he's going to be a little bit owned. He's going to be like twice as owned as Josh Allen, twice as owned as Kyler Kyler Murray. I think he's good chalk though. I think this is one spot where I actually would not mind using him. He's cheaper than Kyler Murray. He's way cheaper than Josh Allen and he projects better than Kyler Murray and just a little bit under uh, Josh Allen. So I love Caleb Williams. He's probably one of my top three quarterbacks of the slate. Um, might end up being the top guy. There's another guy I'll talk about that I like quite a bit, but uh, Caleb Williams is not, um, you know, is not far behind at all. Will Levis, uh, 5.3K, good value. Uh, could be a shootout here. I think it's a sneaky shootout game. Bears have a, an improving defense, though, and Will Levis had, like, one really good game last year as a rookie. I'm not totally convinced that he's the guy there. Uh, big arm, kind of a little bit more mobile than you'd expect. Good value here, but there's other priorities that I prefer. Tony Pollard uh, is going to be splitting with Ty J Spears. So I think you can play either one of them. Um, I don't really want to pay for Ty, uh, Pollard in a timeshare, and I don't really want to roll the dice on Spears at 5.1K. I think they're both fine, but it's not an amazing matchup, and they're going to be sharing duties. So not really in on that. Uh, DeAndre Swift at 6K is okay, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how the Bears running back room plays out as well i'm much more interested in their passing game but honestly getting exposure to the bears offense in general isn't a bad idea so swift is still at play <clears throat> all right dj Moore up top at 6.5k looks amazing uh kind of a light projection honestly and i think that's just because like the presence of keenan allen and obviously the incoming rookie rama dunze the guy that i really like here is going to be a dunze 4k flat for a guy who's gonna be starting on the outside i mean come on a dunze looks like a smash pick he's going to carry some ownership but i do not care uh, also like DJ Moore, definitely prefer him to Keenan Allen just because he's cheaper and more explosive and Keenan Allen 
like he's had like the overweight camp concerns and he's like always hurt it seems so i think all three of those bears guys are in play but i would rank, rank them adunze dj keen <coughs> keenan I, I even keenan's fine if he's like if he comes in and he's keenan from when he was with the chargers getting like crazy target share and just dominating then he's a value at 6.9 i just don't trust him yet on the other side calvin ridley and deandre hopkins should have a soak up all the target share for the Titans. Um, they're too cheap given that they're not even six K. So both of them are in play. I prefer Kelvin Ridley just because he's not as old as nuke and he's, he hasn't been banged up like nuke has nuke missed a lot of practice time with a knee issue. So I definitely prefer Kelvin Ridley there. Um, just because nuke has missed time. We might see a little bit more out of Traylon Burks and uh, Tyler Boyd. So I mean, of the two, I would definitely rather take a shot on Traylon Burks at 3.4K just as a nice punt for GPPs. Um, but we don't know how much he's actually going to play. And even if he does play, is he going to have a lot of success behind these other two guys soaking up all the targets? I don't know. I don't really want to use him, but I think he's on the table. At tight end, that's a big fade for me. I think if you use anybody, it's going to be Cole Komet just because he is a steady presence at tight end. But Gerald Everett's in there too. He's he's a veteran that came in, gives him a, a little bit more athletic and explosive presence. But I don't trust any of the tight ends in this game. Defensively, I would absolutely go to the Bears here. I think Levis could offer a lot of turnovers and sacks in this game. So at 3.4K, the Bears look pretty intriguing, especially since they're not going to be owned. Like I said, I don't love to pay up over 3K for my defense, but 3.4K isn't egregious, especially when you're uh, facing a guy that we don't even know if he's good yet. Um, on the other side, you could say the same thing about Caleb Williams if you're not a believer, but I am. So that's why I don't want to go there. And believe me, it is hard to say that as a Packers fan. Very, very hard. All right, we got the Patriots and the Bengals for the next game. Let me take a quick sip break. <sighs> High quality H2O. All right. So Joe Burrow obviously is in play at 6.5K. He's going to want to, you know, just crush it after missing a good chunk of last year with his wrist issue. I think he's a little bit overpriced uh, relative to the slate. I think in a vacuum, getting Joe Burrow at 6.5K is a discount, but this game is probably a blowout. It's a, got a, what, an eight point spread, low total. It just seems ugly to me. Burrow also is historically kind of a notoriously slow starter. Plus, Ch Jamar Chase missed time with the holdout. T. Higgins is questionable. It just seems like a friggin' nightmare, and I don't really want to pay to find out if Joe Burrow is going to, <clears throat> you know, come out and just crush. And like I said, I prefer Caleb Williams at $600, $600 cheaper. I prefer Kyler Murray at a cheaper price. I just don't see why we have to go Burrow here. Um, uh, Jacoby Brissett, no freaking thanks. All right, running back, Ramon J. Stevenson. As far as, like, role goes... I love Stevenson. The price of 5.9 K looks really, really good. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much and how <clears throat> Antonio Gibson cuts into his workload. But honestly, Stevenson is a three down back. So we got red zone potential. We got early down. We got, uh, you know, pass catching out of the backfield. So I think he looks pretty good at 5.9. Um, it's just hard to commit to a running back. Who's probably going to be in a blue blowout where they're losing is the problem. Chase Brown and Zach Moss are also projected to split. The Bengals will not reveal any information on that. I think Zach Moss at this point is probably the safer play at 5.8K, but do I want to pay almost 6K for a guy that I'm not even totally sure what his role is? I don't know. I do think in a game where the Bengals are probably going to be winning, Zach Moss just makes more sense. He, he's just kind of like an early down thumper. He's the red zone guy. Chase Brown is... If they are splitting them traditionally, they, they kind of won't say that well, if that's what they're doing. But if they are splitting them traditionally, then Chase Brown is probably going to be used more as an extension of the passing game out of the backfield rather than a, a true uh, runner. But if they're like winning the whole game, both these guys could get a lot of a lot of carries. So uh, they're both in play, just not um, not super in love with using running backs who don't have concrete roles. <clears throat> Uh, Jamar Chase is always on the table. He's 7.8K. He's awesome. Uh, they're probably going to crush in this game, but he hasn't played in forever. He's been away from the team, um, at least like he hasn't been actively practicing. So he's supposed to play in this game. I'm not doing it, though. Um, maybe I'll regret fading Jamar Chase at 4.8% ownership, but he's not owned for a reason. It's because he hasn't been around there, and it's always really tough to trust guys who could potentially get off to slow starts because there's just there's no chemistry there. Or they're not up to game shape. Whatever the case may be, I'm out on Chase for week one. T. Higgins popped up on the injury report, so he's questionable. 
I mean, I, I don't know, man. The Bengals situation is a little bit tricky. Uh, I think he'll play, and at 6.1K, if he does, he looks like a really good value. So if he's in, I like T. Higgins. Uh, if he's randomly out, you got some value here uh, with Andre. Um, and then obviously Jamar Chase would be a little bit more, it would be a little bit safer at that point. Um, the Patriots wide receiver room is a freaking mess. I don't know. Demario Douglas, Jalen Polk. Ugh, it's gross. I don't want to do any of that. I don't trust Jacoby Brissett. Um, so I don't want to play with the Pats whatsoever. At tight end, I do not hate Hunter Henry. He's cheap at 4.2K. The Bengals were not good against tight ends last year. Second to last. Average uh, gave up 14 fantasy points per game. And Jacoby Brissett is kind of a check down king. So I can see him dumping it to Henry and Stevenson quite a bit, possibly. And obviously Antonio Gibson to a lesser extent. So I think he's fine at 4.2K. The only issue is, like, I would rather play Taysom Hill or Kyle Pitts in that same price range. Mike Gusecki takes over as the top tight end for the Bengals. That should inspire nobody. Uh, Gusecki is a decent athlete, and he's only 3K. Uh, so there's that. But I don't feel good about it. On the other side, the Bengals defense looks awesome. I I don't really trust defensive ownership projections anymore because they are, they are expensive. They would be like the one defense on this slate where I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll pay up for them because they're facing the Patriots who do not project to do well offensively. But like I said, I don't like investing like, you know, almost 4K on a defense that could easily be, you know, garbage. Uh, the other side, I do not want the Patriots defense because the Bengals have too much uh, upside. All right, here we go. Houston and Indy. In Indy, we have two. This game, this game could be a shootout. This game has a 49 total. I think it is one of, if not the highest game totals of this main slate. CJ Stroud at 7.5K is obviously looking really good. He's a little bit pricey relative to the slate just because I feel like Josh Allen has more upside and a, and a better floor, and he's only $500 more. So if I'm going to pay for... So if I'm going to pay 7.5 for somebody, I'm just going to go with Josh Allen. That's just what I'm going to do. Um, and then there's way more value below him. So I think CJ Stroud is a very good play. I think he's in a great game environment and I think this is going to be a shootout. I just don't really, I don't want to go get him at that price. Sticking in the same game, Anthony Richardson just is a way better value by comparison. He's 1.2 K cheaper. Um, you know, Houston's defense, I think, is going to be a little bit better than it was last year. Uh, Justin Mecca Ryan's is a really good uh, defensive coach, and he's their head coach. So I would imagine that ends up, you know, shifting in a positive direction. Um, but Anthony Richardson can save the day with his legs. I mean, he it's very limited what he showed us as a rookie last year, but he had really good production uh, in limited time just because he can, you know, get points with his legs and go get touchdowns and stuff. So... I think he looks great at 6.3K. The only issue for me there is that he's probably going to be really chalky. I am probably going to go somewhere else and hope that Anthony Richardson bottoms out and fails in week one. But that doesn't mean he's a bad play. I just, as far as ownership goes, I think I'm going to go somewhere else. At running back, you have Jonathan Taylor. You could definitely go pay, pay for him at 7.8K. He crushed the Texans last time he faced them last year. He is expensive, but this is a good game environment. He has a really good projection, and he's not even going to be that owned. Him and Bijan both look really, really good. I do not mind pairing them whatsoever. Um, yeah, nothing bad to say about him, uh, except he could get touchdowns vultured from Anthony Richardson. But like, if Anthony Richardson's going to be double the ownership there and, and going to be really chalky, you could easily fade Richardson and just bank on it being a JT game, and that could be one way to approach the slate. Uh, you also got Joe Mixon, who looks to have a pretty solidified role at 6.6K. I think he's just safe. I just think it's a little bit different, though. He's not on the Bengals where we knew what he was and you know what he was going to do. With Houston, we're not entirely sure yet what that means, especially since most of their production is probably going to come from Stroud through the air. So I think he's a fine play at 6.6K, a little bit steep for me in a new setting. So I'm not exactly locking him in by any means. Nico Call and Stefan Diggs, Tank Dell, Tank Dell, pick your poison. They all look really good. Uh, I'm just going to play, you know, ownership and price game here. Tank Dell looks the best at 5.5K. Uh, Nico is a little bit expensive. Diggs and a new stop after looking washed last year is a little bit expensive. So I think Dell is just the play for me here. But if you want to play Nico or Diggs, you absolutely can. I have no problem with that. Michael Pittman at 6.8K feels a little bit steep to me. Um, I don't want to do that just because I feel like the Colts, a lot of their production could just come from JT 
or Anthony Richardson running or just spreading the ball around. I have no idea what's really going to happen there, but I don't want to pay almost 7K for Pittman, who doesn't score touchdowns and is not that explosive of a player. Uh, if you want to you know, really play the JP, uh, GPP game, maybe a Donnie Mitchell at 3.8K could be kind of interesting. If he ends up actually starting in the number two spot with Josh Downs out, um, he could be a really good value. Don't forget about Alec Pierce either. He's been mostly just a deep threat so far in his career, but the coaches have been talking positively about him like all off season. So with, you know, some ownership potentially going Mitchell's way, maybe Pierce could be a guy we don't completely overlook. That said, I'm not feeling amazing about the Colts uh, passing game. I'd be more about Richardson or JT in this game. A tight end, obviously Kylan Grayson is, or Granson is, the starting tight end for the Colts, but you know, last year they kind of just did musical chairs at the position. So I don't really trust him, even though at 2.9 K, he is a nice value. Dalton Schultz is a way safer play, but he's $2,000 more. Um, I think he's an okay value at tight end, but just not a great projection, not a really high ceiling, especially when he's competing with an extra good wide receiver uh, in that offense. Defensively, um, these defenses are cheap because the game is supposed, supposed to be high scoring. I would definitely definitely lean uh, Texans for defense just because I trust Indy's offense way less. They are a good cheap punt at 2.7K. Next up, we got the Jaguars and the Dolphins in Miami. Tua at 7K flat is totally fine. Trevor Lawrence is a way better value at 6.2K. They have almost the same exact projection. Lawrence is going to be about double the ownership, but I wouldn't care. Um, if you want to, it's going to probably be a shootout. Really nice uh, game total was at 49. So it's like matching the previous game we just discussed. Both guys are in play. I just greatly prefer Trevor Lawrence. I think two is a little bit priced out at 7K, uh, especially since um, he doesn't offer a, you know much of a rushing floor. All right, Andrew running back, Devon Achan looks awesome. The only problem is he's going to be chalky, and everybody's just expecting him to smash. He's a little bit expensive for a guy who does not get a ton of touches and also still has to compete with Raheem Mostert and possibly even Jalen Wright. Um, I still like Achan for GPPs. Uh, I just don't really like the ownership. I think Mostert is a more interesting play at $400 less just because he's not going to be owned. Um, obviously, Achan is just crazy. He's just way more efficient. And if they do end up getting him involved as a receiver, then fading him could be a mistake. So as it stands, I'm not fading him for sure. I'm not fading him. But I'd probably be a little bit underweight just because he needs to like – he really needs to hit on those touches for it to be worth it. The better value for sure is Etienne. He's only $400 more than HN. He's not nearly as owned, and he projects just about the same. He's going to get catches. He's going to get red zone looks, and he's going to get work all across the field. So um, let me see how the Dolphins do against running backs last year. Uh, pretty darn good. So the matchup isn't maybe the best, but Etienne's role – um, makes me feel a lot better about him. And I also like that he's going to be overlooked. Uh, Tyreek Hill looks awesome. I don't need to do a big sales pitch for him. Jalen Waddle also looks good. I think when it comes to when it comes to price and uh, and everything, I think Waddle is obviously the better value, but it's going to be really hard to get away from Tyreek Hill in week one in this matchup. Um, I don't think you need him, but he projects very, very well, and he's going to garner, garner some ownership. So if he smashes and you don't have Tyreek, you're going to be in trouble. Um, on the other side, the Christian Kirk at 5.5 K is totally fine. Gabe Davis at 4.5 K. He's just a tourney guy. I mean, like he can go off and he can do absolutely nothing. So he's risky. I'm going to wait and see on Brian Thomas jr. I do like him uh, a lot and I like his 4.7 K price tag. So if you're rolling out a lot of lineups, he's definitely one of those guys like, uh, you know, like Darnell Mooney or something where we can just like roll the dice or a Dunze and just be like, Hey man, too cheap, too talented, too cheap. Let's, let's see what happens. So I think the upside is very clear. He is going to be starting on the outside for the Jags. So, I mean, I like him at 4.7 K. I think he's the Jags player. I would want the most at wide receiver uh, in tournaments. At tight end, Evan Ingram is a PPR god, and I'm pretty sure the Titans or the Dolphins were not good against tight, uh, tight ends last year. Yeah, they're fourth worst. So Evan Ingram looks good at 5.5K. The only issue is going to be owned, and he is not exactly cheap. At the tight end position, 5.5K is not cheap. Um, and I think if I'm going to be paying up that much, I think I prefer Trey McBride or uh, Dalton Kincaid, just because I think they have a little bit of higher ceiling. Uh, John U. Smith for the Dolphins. I mean, he's 3.5K for a starting tight end in an explosive Miami offense. So for tournaments, you can consider him, but I don't love it. Um, 
if you don't believe that Trevor Lawrence is going to be good, if you believe he's a boss and he just sucks, Miami Dolphins at 3.2K are okay. I do not want to play the Jaguars against an explosive Miami offense. All right. We are moving along here. It's taking quite a bit longer than I thought it would, so I don't know if we're going <laughs> to so many more games left. I don't know if we're going to do it uh, this way next time. Maybe we'll have to kind of uh, cut it down because this is taking quite a bit. But here we go. Uh, we got the – Vikings and Giants. I'll just try to speed it up a little bit. Uh, Sam Darnold against the Giants. I think the Giants defense is going to be pretty good this year, actually, by the way. So I'm not that interested in Darnold in the first game of the year. Daniel Jones has rushing upside, but I don't want to do that. Aaron Jones looks pretty good at 6.5K. The price is a little bit steep for a guy who's often injured. He's getting old, and he might be in a timeshare with Ty Chandler. So I'm not like Gaga to play him, but I think he's fine. Devin Singletary looks to be the lead back for the Giants, so 5.7K is a good price for him. Wide receiver, I love Jettas here. I, I don't think Sam Darnold needs to be amazing for Justin Jefferson for Justin Jefferson to be amazing. I think he's got tons of targets, and 8.4K is a discount for how good he can be, so I like him quite a bit. Malik Neighbors at 5.9K is way too cheap. He's going to carry ownership, but I do not care. He looks awesome. Um, Addison, Addison is an okay leverage play on Justin Jefferson, assuming he plays. Uh, not really interested in anybody else there. Uh, tight end is good, disgusting. Uh, defensively, I like the Giants just because Sam Darnold is a turnover machine, and the Vikings are also in play because Daniel Jones isn't a whole lot better. All right, moving on. We got Denver and Seattle. Bo Nix making his first career start against the Seahawks. So uh, at 5K flat, he does have mobile ability, and he's got some underrated weapons around him. So Bo Nix at 5K, I think if you want to go all the way down there, I think that's okay. Geno Smith at 5.5K. I don't really trust Geno, but he does project well, and he's not going to be that owned, so I will say that. I, mean, I don't want to play him, but he is a value. Kenneth Walker is one of my favorite uh, running backs of the slate. Only 6.1K has home run hitting upside. The Broncos were not good against running backs last year. They ranked third to last. Uh, so he looks really good. Only problem is he's going to be a little bit owned, but I don't really care. Javante Williams, assuming he gets the lion's share of the carries for Denver, is a really good value at 5.5K. He projects okay, but if he's going to be owned, he's ticking up 10% ownership here. Uh, if he's going to be owned, I will get away from him for sure. Uh, probably all I'll do there for running back. A wide receiver, DK Metcalf. Um, he's a home run hitter. 6.2K is a little bit too cheap. Only only problem is, is he going to be matched up with Patrick Sertain? That would be my main question. So not super excited to play him necessarily. Uh, Cortland Sutton is a decent value at 5.6. Uh, Marvin Mims is a d- decent punt at 3.5K, assuming he starts on the outside for the Broncos. Um, and then you have J- JSN. If Tyler Lockett is out or limited, JSN at 4.9 is pretty nice. At tight end, uh, no offense. Um, he's okay. Greg Dulcich. We don't know what the Broncos are going to do at tight end. I just don't think there's enough upside here to really – uh, take these guys seriously. So I don't want to go with them. I think Bonex's first start, you can absolutely play the Seahawks defense. And then on the other side, I mean, Geno Smith isn't always a reliable guy. So the Broncos as a 2.5 K punt is totally in play. All right. Next up, we got the Raiders and the chargers. Let's see here. Justin Herbert, 5.8 K pretty good value, but the Raiders are not an easy matchup and he did lose weapons and he's got a foot injury. So I like him as a value for season long leagues, but in DFS, I'm going to pick my spots and this isn't going to be it. Not trusting Gardner Minshew against a potentially improved Chargers defense. Zamir White, in theory, at 5.7K could be a good value, but we don't really know for sure if he's going to be the guy. And I also don't fully trust that the Raiders will be leading in this game. J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, pick your poison. I think one of those guys could have a really good week one. I lean J.K. Dobbins just because he's more explosive, but uh, nobody really feels good here at running back. Uh, wide receiver Devontae Adams is a value at 7.6K for who he can be. With Gardner Minshew, though, it's an unknown. Uh, Jacoby Myers, again, also supposedly a value at 5K flat, but I don't know. I don't know how to really grade the Raiders offense yet. Um, I think I would lean Jacoby as being a safer and better value option as opposed to Devontae, just because I don't want to invest almost 8K in Devontae when I have no idea if Minshew is actually going to be able to consistently get him the ball. Chargers are a mess. You could argue for Quentin Johnston. You could argue for Lad McConkey, Joshua Palmer, DJ Shark. All these guys are in play just because we don't know how it's going to roll out. I think Johnston is my favorite one at 4.1K, though, just because if he actually catches the damn ball, his size and, and physicality and explosiveness uh, could make him a really fun play, especially in tournaments. 
<clears throat> a tight end, Hayden Hurst, should start for the Chargers at 3K, but he does not offer any upside. Brock Bowers has been banged up, but it looks like he'll play at 4.5K. You could bet on his first NFL game being a smash. Um, I kind of doubt it, but I think he's totally totally fine for tournaments at 4.5K. Uh, defensively, Raiders defense is a value at 2.8K, especially since we don't know what the Chargers are going to be yet. Uh, in theory, uh, Jim Harbaugh should improve the Chargers defense, and they're facing Gardner Minshew, so they also are viable. All right, next up we got Dallas and Cleveland, the last two games we got here. So Dak Prescott against the Browns defense. Dak Prescott, in theory, at 7.1K is okay, but I don't like playing guys against the Browns defense. They were pretty good against quarterbacks last year. Um, not in the playoffs against CJ Stroud, but last year they ranked third against fancy quarterbacks on the year. So this is not the week to play Dak. Deshaun Watson is a disgusting person. And um, I mean, he's a dual threat guy at 6K. So he's in play, but I don't really trust him. He's been, he's, he's looked mega washed for like two years now. Jerome Ford is one of my favorite uh, values at running back 5.5K. No Nick Chubb, only Pierre Strong there to fight for, competition i think drone four is just going to be playing like all the snaps and he looks like an awesome value cowboys aren't the best matchup in the world uh but it doesn't matter he's got a really good role and he's he's pretty cheap uh cowboys running back room is a nightmare uh, ezekiel elliott is pretty expensive at 5.8k and super washed rico dalado 4.6 i mean one of those guys are probably going to hit i guess i would i would lean on rico just because he's cheaper but i don't feel good about it and it's not really the best matchup in the world i feel like browns were Pretty good against running backs. Yeah, they're kind of middle of the road against running backs, but even so, eh, I don't really trust that. <clears throat> CD 8.9K. I think he's the most expensive wide receiver on the board, and and for good reason. Uh, but he missed like all of camp with his holdout, so I'm not feeling that. Uh, also, the Browns are not the best matchup to go against. They ranked third against wide receivers last year. So in season long leagues, you're playing CD in DFS. I think I'll be away from him for at least the first week. Amari Cooper, a little revenge game against his former Cowboys team. He projects pretty decently. The price is fine at 6.4K. He's probably my favorite play at wide receiver in this game. Um, Jalen Tolbert is a fine punt at 3.4K. Jerry Judy is okay at 5.1, but it's probably just Amari or bust for me in this game. The tight end Jake Ferguson and David Njoku project very similarly. They're almost the same price. They're almost the same ownership. I think they're both just fine. I would just go with the uh, cheaper option, which is going to be Jake Ferguson. Uh, yeah. And then on defense, uh, I do like, I mean, both defenses look good, to be honest. This is uh, a low game total. Um, the Browns are the better value at 3.1K. <clears throat> They're going up against the better offense, though, whereas the Dallas is just known for getting sacks and creating turnovers. And I don't trust Deshaun Watson at all. So the only issue there is I don't want to pay up for my defense. All right, here we go. We're almost done. We're going to get it uh, within an hour here. Commanders and Buccaneers are going to wrap things up for us. Jaden Daniels, one of my favorite plays uh, at quarterback 5.7K. It's honestly, it, to me, it's probably it, between four guys at this point. Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Kyler Murray, Anthony Richardson. What do they all have in common? They're cheap. They can run. They have big arms. They can they can make plays. He projects really well. The Buccaneers, by the way, were not that great against quarterbacks. They were what six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh against fantasy quarterbacks, or, or they were seventh in fantasy points allowed per game to quarterbacks. So it's a good matchup uh, by the numbers from a fantasy perspective. And also, they gave up six rushing touchdowns last year to qu quarterbacks. So I just think Jane Daniels is super underrated. Um, and right now he's not carrying, well, actually he is carrying ownership at 10%, but I don't really care at quarterback. I'm not really going to play the ownership game. I'm just going to have probably those four guys. And then maybe a sprinkling of CJ Stroud and Josh Allen. And that's just all I'm going to do. Uh, Baker Mayfield was good last year. Um, uh, and the commander's defense is terrible. They were second to last against quarterback. So he's actually in play, uh, just doesn't offer a lot on the ground. And his offensive coordinator did leave for Carolina. So I'm not super into him I run back Rashad white. They keep talking about Bucky Irving possibly stealing you know, work from him, but he proje he projects well. The commander's defense isn't good. I think they were terrible against running backs as well. Yeah, second to last in, against running backs. He's really chalky, though, so I would be hesitant to buy into him due to that. That said, PPR machine, uh, good projection, good price. So just need to hope Bucky Irving doesn't mess with them. Uh, Redskins, or Redskins, oops. Uh, Commander's uh, running back room is not fun to figure out. I would imagine they'll be trailing in this game, though. 
Uh, so Austin Eckler probably stands out at 6K, but I don't really want either of the, either him or Brian Robinson Jr. All right, so passing game, Mike Evans feels a little bit steep at 7.3K, but he could find success in one of the best matchups on the board. I just don't feel like amazing about investing that much money in Mike Evans. Uh, Chris Godwin at 5.8K is okay. I don't have. I think Baker in the Bucks passing game across the board, they're fine. They just don't really pop to me. Uh, Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry looks pretty good as a nice stacking option with my boy, Jaden Daniels. He's too cheap at 5.6K, especially with Jahan Dotson now in Philly. He is the guy by a lot. Now, this is risky, but uh, one of these uh, commander's punts, maybe Diami Brown or Zacchaeus, one of these guys could end up popping off. Maybe even Luke McCaffrey. I don't know. They're all cheap. Brown is the bare minimum at 3K flat. So none of them project very well. None of them are safe at all, but in tournaments to save up some money to get, go get Tyreek Hill and Josh Allen and Bijan, whoever you want to get, I do have some interest in doing that. At tight end, Cade Otten is okay, but don't really love him here. Zach Ertz is probably washed, but he's only 3.6K. And by the way, the Buccaneers were third worst against tight ends last year. So if you like Jaden Daniels, you can start playing around with who you're going to use. Um, and that's that's something I'll do. Trusting the commanders feels gross, but here we are. All right, and here we go. Defensively, obviously, you can fire up the Buccaneers if you don't want to play Jaden Daniels. There's nothing wrong with that. Buccaneers defense is not the same defense it used to be, um, and they're 3.5K, but obviously they're facing a rookie and an organization that is just a dumpster fire. Commanders on the other side. I mean, Baker Mayfield can sometimes eat sacks and throw, ter- throw picks and stuff, so at 2.5K, not the worst punt in the world, but not exactly – uh, one I'm super excited about. All right, that does it for me. 52 minutes here, uh, uh, just about for a full breakdown. But at this point, you know which players I'm prioritizing, you know who I'm liking, what values I'm liking, all that kind of thing. So a quick build out here. No, I don't want to take forever. Just kind of mapping it out. If, I, if we're going position by position, if I had to pick my number one pick and we can build from there, I can go and show you. Um, let's see here. Where was he? I'm losing Jaden Daniels here. What in the wacky? Okay, Jaden Daniels up here. Yeah, really nice. Uh, really nice projection for him at 5.7K. Uh, he could be really chalky, but I don't really care. Caleb Williams also uh, 200 away. Kyler Murray and then Anthony Richardson. That's just pretty much where I'm resting at quarterback. You can pick which one you want. You can pick somebody else entirely, but that's just where I'm going. Um in here i see that tyreek higgins projection was removed so let me just real check real quick. does that mean he's out okay he's now doubtful all right so like i said um the value uh in cincy is a little bit more prevalent now so we can definitely look at that if we want to uh going over to running back our top priorities i really like Bijan. i'm okay with these other guys but you know rashad white's gonna be chalky a chan's gonna be chalky Kamara's gonna be chalky i would i'm gonna go get jt to leverage the Anthony Richardson ownership and also just because he's not very owned himself. And then I really like Ken Walker down here. Is there any value that I absolutely feel like I need to get? Not really, but I do like Ken Walker. He's explosive, so I'm going to go get Ken Walker. And then at wide receiver, let's see. Oh, let's go get our value at tight end, which is going to be Kyle Pitts. We'll get our cheap defense to open things up, which is going to be, for me, the Carolina Panthers. So that saves me money right away. So I have 5.8 K to spread out against my wide receivers and my last remaining flex. And one of my favorite plays of the entire slate is Roma Dunze. That also is going to open up. I get 6.4 K across the rest of my players here. Uh, Wide receiver. Let's see. Oops. Okay. Um, what are the guys was I talking about that I'm pretty high on? Let's make sure I'm not missing them as I work through. Ooh, Malik Neighbors. Yes, I do. Uh, okay, that opens things up. If I'm using Jane Daniels, I might want to go get Terry McLaurin there. And then that leaves us with our flex, which what can we do? We can go get Bijan or Jamar Chase. I mean, with no T. Higgins there, Jamar Chase, uh, it's tough. I'll have to look at the situation to see how – how good I feel about it. But with no T Higgins, his ownership's going to come up. His projection might come up and he might just be a little bit more safer. Um, 
So for right now, I'm going to lock in Jamar Chase, but you could also go Bijan here, um, or you could move things around and also get Justin Jefferson, who I really, really like as well. So that is kind of where my head is at right now. I want a cheapish running back or quarterback. Jay Daniels looks like a good option there. You don't have to pay all the way up for JT. You could come down and then maybe get uh, Tyreek over Jamar Chase or something, if you, or CD, whoever you want to do. But this is kind of where I'm at as far as building my lineup for week one. All right, that was forever, but we went through all every game, and hopefully you have a better idea of how to approach this slate. If I helped you, please give this a big like and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and good luck.